Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any post. And also like this video. Everybody kick your feet up, relax, as I recap the entire episode with photos offset to the side of Insecure Season 4 Episode 9 entitled Low Key Trying. There's only one more episode left of the season, Episode 10, and I can't cannot wait if you already seen the episode and you just want to listen to my thoughts i do have the minute marks in the comments it's all coming up next so lawrence and Issa, they are spending a lot of time together we see a time lapse of sex them talking rekindling possibly something eating takeout with one another and they look like they're just taking things step by step and getting to know one another and Issa gets a text from Nathan basically confirming, hey, you know, are you still coming by the spot later on? And she stops to think for a second. And she says, you know, um, I I just want to make sure I want to I'm going to talk to you about something. Um, well, you know, there's this guy, Nathan, and, you know, him and I. Well, you know, we're really cool and really good friends. And I previously, you know, said that I would help him move and all that good stuff. And I just want to tell you that because, I mean, whatever we got going on, whatever's happening, I just want to be honest. And I don't want to mess this up, whatever it is. And what about you? And Lauren says, you know, if you're talking about Condola, I talk to her and, you know, us, everything, it's, it's done. And then he confirms that. He's possibly going to take on a new job, but the first hurdle, of course, is having a great interview. It's the long-awaited scene. Molly finally meets up with her psychologist to talk about things that have been occurring in her life. And the psychologist says, you know, I noticed that of all of your occurrences, everything that you're telling me, there seems to be a pattern. You seem as if you always want to be right. And you're not recognizing that in all of these situations, you do play a part in everything, whether you think they were wrong, whether you think you were right. But it's an important question to ask. Do you want to work on relationships and repair them or do you want to be right? Which was absolutely amazing. And Molly says, well, you know, She's my friend, you know, she's my best friend. And I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, of course, that's something I want to work out. And the psychologist says, no, 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 no. What I'm asking you is any relationships that you have, think about, is it worth your time? Is it worth your effort to fix it? And you can see that Molly is enlightened by her statement. Molly goes through her phone, she's at home, she's in her thoughts, and she's going through her call list about, man, who can I talk to about this situation? She calls Kelly, and she's not available, so we listen to her hilarious voicemail in English, then in Espanol, letting her callers know that she's unavailable. She then calls her brother Amal, and he picks up, and he's having some lunch, and he's just enjoying his time alone, and she says, well, you know, you know, me and Lawrence, you know, we're trying to work things out. And, but you know, Nathan, you know, that guy, I mean, I, I'm just, I, I just want to know, what do you think I should do about that? And Amal's just like, oh, really? Oh, you working things out with Lawrence? Oh, okay. And Nathan, oh, well, mm, that's up to you. And Issa's asking these questions, you know, when you go through times in your life and you know something's not right, but you kind of want somebody to confirm something that you know that's trash that evidently won't work. But you're looking for that kind of nudge to push you towards something that, uh, you know you shouldn't be doing or you know that you know it seems like Issa's trying to have her cake and eat it too and her brother's seeing right through the bs he's her brother he can sense him from a mile away and he quickly gets off the phone with her and Issa's sitting there like why did i even try to talk to my brother about that clearly he's gonna put me in my place Issa then considers calling Molly. She clicks on her name and we see that Issa calls Molly saying, hey girl, I really need us to spend some time together and chat. 
And also, you know, me and Lawrence, we're, we're, we're trying to make it right and getting back together. And if it's anybody I need to talk to about that, it would be you. And Molly says, wow, really? Out of everything and stuff that you're telling me, you want to meet up and talk because it's always about you. Same old Issa, always making it about her and borrowing and asking for stuff. But we see that this has not happened. This is something that Molly is envisioning. She's envisioning her reactions to everything and what she's seen in the past. And then she says to herself, hmm, let me stop tripping. Let me at least make the initiative to call her. She calls Molly, but you know, Molly is in her ses session with her psychologist and it goes straight to voicemail. And Issa does leave a voicemail saying, hey, we need to talk. I want to know if we can meet up. When Molly hears the voicemail, it kind of brings a smile to her face and we could tell that she's agreeing with it and that they'll meet later on. When Issa is at the diner, she's nervous. She's telling the waitress, okay, I, I, I think I want this. I think I want that. M maybe I'll order this. You know, I I'm waiting on a friend. And the waitress is saying, do you want something with some alcohol? Because <laughs> clearly she can tell she's stressed out. Issa's just like, yeah, bring two mimosas, girlfriend. Thank you so much. Molly finally arrives. And of course, there's awkwardness. They give a hug and they say hi. And they start to talk about small talk and family and they're going and around the elephant in the room they haven't brought up anything about the block party anything about the tension so it's really just kind of like uh, it's not what we really need to be talking about but it's some sort of an initiative from the both of them that maybe they're there and they could possibly talk about the issues but as they bring their lunch to a close they're walking before they get up and leave, the check comes and Issa says, no, 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 I got it. I'll pay for the lunch. And Molly's like, really? And Issa's like, no, I owe you like a billion payments with lunch and, and or brunches. I got it, girl. Don't worry about it. So they're getting up and they're leaving and it's still this tension and they haven't talked about it, but at least it's something. Molly goes to Andrews, and of course, when she walks in, he quickly gets off the phone, which I just find it just so odd. You can stay on the phone when Molly comes in, but anywho, I digress. She comes in, and he asks her, how did the meetup go? Is everything okay? And Issa says, well, you know, we yeah, we talked, and, you know, we caught up a little bit, but, you know, we really didn't talk about anything too serious. And Andrew says, you know, well... You could have brought some things up. You could have said something that was on your mind. And Molly goes, you know what? I, I, I did my part. Like, I showed up. And Andrew says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Before you continue, please understand that I'm on your side. It seems as if Issa's, you know, extending that olive branch and she's trying. But, you know, you can go a step further and meet her halfway. But Molly doesn't see it that way. She sees it as she could have brought it up. She could have talked about those certain issues. Why should I have to bring it up? And the only thing that I want to be thinking about right now is what I'm about to watch on television. And Andrew says, well, you know, speaking of that, you know, Victor did call and we got some tickets to go see the Clippers and I would like for you to come with. And Molly says, no, you know what? I'm just going to stay here. Maybe you should go. You know, make it make it a guy's night out. And you can see it all on his face that he's very disappointed that she doesn't even want to attempt to try to talk to his brother and at least have some fun in the process. Issa meets up with the intern that helped her with the block party and they're leaving a bike shop and they're talking about, man, you know, that is a potential vendor, but we don't even know what the idea of the next event is. We don't know what we're going to talk about it. And the intern says, you know, whoa, you know, pump the brakes a little bit. Even though we don't know what the topic is or the direction that we're going, at least acknowledge the fact that we do have two juicing companies that say that they're interested. And maybe this biking company is a potential endeavor as well. So just look at the silver lining of everything. Lawrence calls Issa and they share some small talk about rice a roni and hamburger helper and are you team roni or are you team helper and it brings some laughs because they are having a little moment and Lawrence can't wait to share the good news that 
his interview went well. And she says, wow, if this really goes well, you'll really be moving to another location. So she shows that she's very excited and he does say, you know, well, thanks. And I'm just happy that it went well. And Issa does mention to him that she met up with Molly and they didn't talk about the crust and the gutter issue that needs to be talked about, but at least they met up and at least they talked. And Lawrence makes a very interesting comment and says, oh, I see. Well, maybe you two just needed space to just later come together and make things right. And there's this little space of silence. And Issa says, well, maybe, yeah, maybe that's just what we needed. Issa is on her way to Nathan's. And before she even enters the door, she's giving herself a pep talk of how to platonically greet him. Hey, what's up, dude? She's like, no, nah, he's not a white guy. What, what am I talking about? Hey, what's up, bruh? What's going on? And she's going through all of these things to just kind of keep it cordial. And even when she enters the door, he reaches to give her a hug. And she's like, oh, hey, you know, what's up, homie? And <laughs> she's trying so hard to give him the hints like, ooh, please don't do anything to entice me they finally get in and she jokes with him about hey where do I start to help you unpack and you got a nice place here it's wonderful and she tells him you know I there's not a correct moment or time for me to say this because it's just gonna be awkward anyway but I just wanted to tell you that you know my ex-boyfriend and I we are you know, trying to make things work and see if, you know, maybe it can develop into something. And Nathan says, whoa, the uh, dude you cheated on? That seems interesting because, you know, he seems like he's uh, sometimey. You know, like he can't ever make up his mind about what he wants. And Issa says, well, you know what? At least he says what's on his mind and doesn't disappear. And Nathan says, you know, I, I didn't disappear. I found out that I'm bipolar. When I went to Houston, I, um, I found out that it all became clear what was going on with me. And Issa apologizes and says, I'm so sorry. But Nathan says, no, 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 I... I'm okay. I just wanted to let you know that. And it's my fault. And I'm just now telling you. But it seems to be good energy in the room. And they share a nice laugh of, I'm glad we've talked about this. And it seems like they're making an adult decision to keep going as friends. Molly arrives at Andrew's. And Andrew says, you know, um... How'd your day go? How is everything? She's catching him up on just her day and what's been going on. And she asked him about the game. And he says, you know, um, I got to admit it was weird that you weren't there because, you know, Victor did invite you. I mean, what's going on? I mean, are you just going to not ever talk to him again? I mean, he is my brother. And as they start to get into the topic, Issa and Nathan walk in. And they're like, oh, hey, um, you guys are talking. I mean, we can leave. Um, you know, I, matter of fact, I'm not even hungry. You know, you got food there. We just ate. Uh, but, you know, we can, we can go. And Issa's like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to just stop. I mean, I'm, I'm starving. And they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry, too. I don't know what you were talking about. Let's just all eat. So it's this, oh, my goodness, they're going to talk and they're going to spend time with one, with one another. Great. They all, of course, have dinner, and after dinner, they sit down, and they're creating small talk. They're talking about the past and growing up, and they even share some jokes about how Nathan is from Houston, and he hates guacamole. He says, I like salsa, but that's about it. And Issa talks about her old apartment and how there was like a crazy stain and it was just weird. And Molly is staying, saying some little laughs. And Issa's just like, hey, you know, well, why don't we play Celebrity Heights? And she sp explains that it's a guessing game where you guess a celebrity's height. And if, you, if you're wrong, you take a drink. And they're like, OK, well, well fine. I mean, it's sounds like something fun. And he sees, Andrew sees that Molly is starting to 
get a little bit more comfortable and chilling out and she's not so uptight. So Issa looks up Bernie Sanders and they're all guessing five, 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 seven, five, eight, maybe. And he's just like, y'all are all going to take a drink. He is six feet tall. And they're like, no, what? No way. Like, when I see him, I'm going to measure him. And they're like, how are you going to measure him? How are you going to do that? And Nathan's just joking, like, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to find out a way to measure him because there's no way he's six feet tall. So they're laughing. Then we see that Andrew gets up because they're running out of champagne and he wants to keep the party going. When he gets up, Molly intends to send a text to Andrew reading see i'm trying with her but instead it goes accidentally to isa and isa looks very insulted and she responds i don't think this was meant for me and of course molly is put on the spot and is embarrassed about her ways and isa says you know what <laughs> that's okay i you know what i'm done that's enough for me and she quickly gets up and molly goes you know no no wait 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 and she's like no 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 i'm out and molly chases after her out of the door and she says look i that message wasn't meant for you and Issa's like do you think clearly and this is the moment that they have that we've all been waiting for and molly goes you know i'm really trying to figure out what's going on i mean i'm i'm trying to make things work out and i'm trying to make our relationship right and i mean you, it's just what is it I didn't realize that you being around me was you trying or was a task for you. Being being around me was something that you had to work out. I mean, I, I thought we were moving forward. And Molly goes, you know, you, you're trying to move forward and make things right by inviting me to brunch, by, by playing old drinking games. I mean, we haven't we haven't talked about the real issues and, and, and the arguments and all of this other stuff. And Issa says, you know, I'm... I'm trying to do certain things. I mean, I'm trying to invite you, but I just didn't know how to bring up those topics. I didn't know what to say, but it can't just be me all of the time. Like you gotta, you gotta meet me halfway. I mean, I want to make it better, but it can't just be me. And Molly says, you know what? <laughs> Maybe who you are now, it doesn't match with who I am now. And, and maybe our friendship just isn't the same. And, and maybe we just don't fit anymore. And you can see the tears start to develop in Issa's eyes. And she says, okay. And Molly questions and says, okay. Like she's surprised that Issa said that. And Issa says, you know what? There isn't much more for me to say. What else can I do? Issa gets in her Uber and she leaves. And Molly seems heartbroken. But it is very evident that Issa's done and she was low-key trying. And that is the end of the episode. So let's get into my thoughts, you guys. So Issa... Seems like she can't make up her mind of what she really wants when it comes to a relationship. She's straddling the fence when it comes to Nathan and Lawrence. You can't really kick it, girl, with somebody that you know you have an intimate interest with and someone that you find madly attractive. Darling, you have got to make a decision. You can't have your cake and eat it too. And it seems like that's what she's doing. Get it together, Issa. You're getting your career going. You're getting things situated with this Lawrence guy. But you got to make a decision. You can do both. Or will she? Or does she even care? It seems to me that Issa is finally making those strides to be more vocal, to say what she means. From seasons one through three, she's usually been the person that sweeps things under the rug. She doesn't really say how she feels. But when she does say how she feels, it's reached the climatic point, meaning that you've let all this time pass before you have voiced your opinion or before you've said how you felt about a certain situation. She seems like she's getting a little better at that. So I'll give her some cool points. All right, now let's get to Andrew. 
ooh-wee, he might be getting to the point where he's realizing that she can't see any fault on her end. You don't want to get your man mad, girl. Your man is coming to you, and he's been so patient since the very first time that he met you. Remember when he met him at Coachella, y'all, and he was kind of babysitting her while she was high on Molly? Good golly, Miss Molly. Girl, you gonna push your man away. Being stubborn, as people say in the South. Instead of stubborn, just stubborn. Andrew is really, really trying with Molly. And I think that it's very interesting how Andrew is saying the same thing that the psychologist is saying. Do you want to put in the effort for friendships? Do you want to put in the effort for this relationship? Can you move forward? Can you stop holding on to things so much? He says it over and over again that my brother is making some type of effort to try. This episode gives gives us awareness to people around Molly or people that know Molly are trying with her. They're really, really trying. Andrew is trying. Victor is not saying that he wasn't right, but he's making some type of effort to invite her to a game, to spend some time together, which potentially could spark a conversation to talk about what they need to talk about. The psychologist is trying to tell you, from a lawyer's perspective, maybe you're seeing it like you always have to be right, but in life, boo-boo, you have to make a decision and you have to realize that you're not perfect, Patty. You've made mistakes as well. And it seems like Andrew, within due time, hmm, she might push him over the edge. Molly, you're pushing everybody away in your life. And will she see the light when everybody around her is gone and she's Han Solo by herself? I don't know, child. Then you got Nathan. He's telling Issa about his true issues, about him being bipolar, about what he done, he, he did, and that he didn't disappear. But bruh, you did go away. You, you didn't say nothing. You didn't tell her where you were. You know, you you owed her some sort of explanation and apology, and you just dropping that on her was kind of messed up. And then you're telling her something like that after she's saying that she wants to work things out with her ex, and then you critique that and say, "Well, your ex is you know some tiny." It's like ooh kind of not the way you want to bring about or talk about what happened in your life. Um, but also, Issa, and this applies in everyday life, will this be something for her to say, okay, this guy really needs to be a friend? Because think about it. In any type of relationship, if there is a handicap, if there is a mental health issue, ethnicity, these are all things that you have to think about. This is something that I'm going to accept this person for and that I will have to deal with. Will Issa be emotionally ready for that? Will she accept that in her life? Because she doesn't have to. That's something she might consider. Knowing that you've been, that you've been diagnosed as someone who has bipolar um, mental issues or mental health Will I have to think about you disappearing again in the future? Will I have to think about you ignoring me and not saying anything because there's an issue with your mental health? That's something that she'll have to consider. Let me know what you think. I love you all so much. Thank you for tuning in. I love y'all's comments. Please, please let me know what you think. I love seeing different perspectives and how you saw the episode or certain things that you're thinking about. I still think there's something up with Andrew and that something up. What I've thought about is maybe he's getting sick and tired of the same old, same old with Molly. And maybe he hasn't been honest about seeing somebody else because before they were dating and seeing other people. So could he still be talking to somebody else? 
I don't know, but let me know what you think. Subscribe if you haven't yet and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And I encourage you all to look at the past couple of posts I made. One, speaking about financial freedom. And the other one, which I think everybody should look at, is the hysterical social media spelling errors. If you need a good laugh, which I think you all do, we all do, please look at that video because I just, I was in tears from laughing so hard looking at posts of people misspelling things. I thought it was hilarious. Please click on that, leave your comments and let me know how much, how much it helped you in making you laugh because in these hard times, we do need to have a good gut laugh and it's just a really, really, really a lot going on. But there are times where we need to breathe, take a moment and just smile and laugh and count our blessings and look at the silver linings in everything. I encourage you all to look at those posts, okay? I love you all. Let me know what you think. And I will see you next week for episode 10. It's the last one, you guys. And this season went by so fast because it's only 30 minutes. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.